Okay, I think I'll, I'll, we'll get started here. Um, for everybody that's joined in, welcome. Thanks for joining us here for Long's Coffee Break series, uh, 15 minutes on um, various topics. We have our manufacturer's rep, Eric Tangloff from Lauren Cook Fan Company joining us today. He's going to go through some, some information on EC motors, speed control, and particularly uh, pressurization systems with fan controls. Some of the applications and and uh, various places where we want to use certain controls and and motor applications for those particular projects and and uh, specific applications. So um, I will turn the time over to Eric. He's got some presentations for us, and he can take it from here. Right. Eric, I'll give you over. I think you got her. So you can see the screen. You can see that. Yep, I got it. All right. So what I'm going to be talking about today is uh, EC motors and controls, as Chad had mentioned. Uh, for EC motors and controls, anything that touches um, uh, those pieces, what we call is Veriflow. So Veriflow is not only the EC motors, but it's also all these different controls that can be packaged with that, as in. If they're a standalone control system or interfacing with a building management system, and then we would simply be taking a zero to 10 volt DC signal. So a lot of these are for speed control, pressure control, airflow, monitoring, or for humidity, temperature, VOC. And then also we have a uh, package which is called a simple drive, which is a VFD that which is pre-packaged, pre-mounted, pre-installed um pre-wired pre-programmed to make it simple to make it easy so starting off with a, an ec motor ec as an electronically commutated uh, it's different from a traditional motor in that you still have the stator rotors out here but we're re replacing the rotor motors with a permanent magnet so at the heart of a EC motor, you'll find a permanent magnet. You'll also find a commutator, and that's basically the brains of the of the motor, telling it, sending it electronic signals via transistors to speed up, slow down, stop, whatever. When you look at that versus a, a permanent magnet motor, so there's an EC motor that has a permanent magnet inside, and then there's an actual PM motor, which is a permanent magnet motor. The difference is that the motor controller on a PM motor is separate because these get tend to get to the larger sizes, all the way up to 10 and 20 horsepowers. And you definitely need a VFD. In this case, we're using the Simpla drive as that controller. Uh, that, contr that VFD has to be PM compatible. So that is equivalent as in PM motor with a motor controller, same function as an EC motor with the built-in controller. As far as efficiency, uh, for sure, EC motors are hands down more efficient than its alternate, which would be a permanent split capacitor motor, a PSC motor. Uh, those start off pretty bad as far as efficiency and they get even uh, worse as, uh, as the part, at part load. Whereas an EC motor, which has uh, minimal losses uh, throughout its range, it doesn't slip at part load, a lot more efficient. And therefore, if it's more efficient, it, it gives off less heat. Um, so the motor runs cooler and motors don't like to run at that elevated temperature. Uh, when you slow down an EC motor, it actually gets cooler. That's not all the case with a PSC motor. So when we get into, um, as far as changing the, uh, the speed, uh, the simplest means is that you have a speed pot. Um, these are different uh, types of motor. This is a McMillan electric motor with a speed pot potentiometer right on the motor casing. That's how you can take a little uh, screwdriver and speed it up, speed it down. Uh, the same way with this type of uh, motor, which is made by NIDEC. It's got a user interface, which is handy because EC motors only work well on direct drive applications. They don't work well on belt drive applications. So by definition, motor RPM is your fan RPM. You can read that right here on this LED screen. That's a very handy 
uh, feature for commissioning, for balancing, for troubleshooting uh, right there on the motor. And then when you get into a PM motor, you also have a, a toggle switch for or a, or another speed pot, I should say, for, uh, for uh, adjusting the speed. So that's the manual approach. That's if you want to uh, set it and leave it as opposed to having an external signal or an external con controller like one of these uh, then set to, to control the EC motor. So what we use, uh, if we have our controls or we're using somebody else's controls, uh, we use we have a, a, a device which is called an air balance kit. And it's not to confuse it with as in we're balancing the system. It's just a, a convenient hub. So rather than having a wiring diagram, the wiring diagram is effectively right here on this hub such that you know where to bring in your, your, um, your power. Uh, you've got the signal output to the motor. If you have an external signal coming in, you have auxiliary contacts, either or normally open or normally closed, and also a remote on off. These could be used to energize or de-energize uh, a, a motorized damper, for instance. Uh, you may have known this as in uh, a zero to 10 signal sent to the, the motor. Uh, nothing happens until it gets to two volts. So you can utilize that first two volts to again, open and close um, a damper. Um, you could use the remote on off as a, you know, with a time clock, uh, however you want to do it. Uh, this could be manually adjusted to adjust the speed, just like you have with the speed potentiometer on the motor itself. Um, or it could take that external, external signal. So what I'd like to uh, spend the remainder of the time is, is talking about pressure control because pressure control applications are on a lot of jobs. And when we talk about pressure control, it's really we're controlling the differential pressure, you know, what it actually is compared to a set point. So if you're familiar with a, a, a tube YouTube manometer, if you blow in on, on one side, on the high side, uh, then you're going to see, this is like, like colored water, if you will, you're gonna see the water rise on the low side. So if you're blowing into the tube, that would happen. That is positive pressure. And then similarly, if you uh, sucked the air out, like a, sucking air out of a straw, then that's going to be negative pressure as shown on the tube manometer. So that's how we measure pressure differential. And we use that differential then to control. Um, we use that pressure differential to send a signal to then control a, uh, a device. So how the pressure uh, controller works is basically there are two principal elements. There's the transducer, and then there is a signal output uh, from the controller. So the transducer operates such that you have a high port and a low port, just like a YouTube manometer. And the differential pressure then works against this diaphragm, which then uh, comes up here against the sensor. And then that sensor then uh, sends a signal up here to this uh, out to the signal output, which then goes off to the, the, the EC, in this case, an EC motor or an actual controller. So when we have the, um, uh, actually, let me go over here. Uh, again, very similar to the manometer, high pressure, low pressure, uh, and then also negative pressure, positive pressure, all relative to uh, what you're trying to measure. And then we get into now direct acting versus re, uh, reverse acting. Uh, with direct acting as the input signal, uh, for instance, in this case, pressure is going up, the output signal that we're sending to, um, to a device or a motor also goes up in tandem with that. As the pressure goes down, our output signal also goes down. So that's direct acting pressure control. And then you have reverse acting pressure control where this is just in the opposite. If pressure increases, your output signal decreases. Uh, and same way, input signal pressure going down, your output signal goes, uh, goes up. So let's, uh, let's talk about a couple of different scenarios here. If we're just trying to measure duct static pressure control, you'd have a static pressure probe mounted in the ductwork, and then you would connect that static pressure probe on the high side of the pressure controller. The low side is left open to ambient, to the atmosphere, I should say. 
And then as we um, were as we're seeing here, if the pressure rises above our preset set point, the control signal to the fan drops. So that's what's called reverse acting control, as in, uh, and we can look at that as in that difference in the pressure is the error. We're trying to get, we're trying to minimize or remove that error to get us back to set point. So that's an easy thing for measuring duct static pressure. When we get into constant velocity or airflow, airflow control, you're very familiar with uh, this formula as far as CFM uh, and the relationship with area and velocity, such that if we are looking at maintaining 1800 CFM through a 16 by 16 inch duct at 1.78 square feet, we do the math on that and we find that we're we're aiming for a constant velocity of 1,013 feet per minute. Uh, another formula that you're probably familiar with, uh, you take that velocity divided by the 4,005 at, at the square, and that yields a velocity pressure. That's our set point that we're looking at at 0.064 inches water gauge. So now we, set, we put that in as the set point uh, for our controller. And then now we have a static pressure probe which now is connected on the low side of the pressure controller. We have a total pressure probe, probe, which is different. That's connected on the high side. So the difference between the total pressure and the static pressure, this has the, the one opening, whereas the total pressure will measure uh, static pressure and the total pressure on the back side, and the difference being the velocity pressure, which is what, what we're after. So in this case, when you're trying to, for instance, uh, maintain uh, constant um, volume or constant velocity um, on with, and you have a filter bank, which is going to low it up. So there's initial filter bank and there's a final loss on that filter bank. As the filter loads up, you can send a, um, so if the filter is loading up, your velocity is going down. So as it's going down, you're sending a uh, signal back to the motor to speed up. Again, that is reverse acting. Stairwell pressurization. Uh, you have the high pressure point port uh, via a static pressure probe mounted in the stairwell. We're trying to keep this area positively pressured. This is uh, to atmosphere. So as the pressure goes down in the stairwell below set point, then we send a signal to back to the motor to speed up, again, reverse acting control. Dryer exhaust uh, in multi-story buildings and a lot of uh, markets these days for condominiums, uh, uh, apartments, et cetera, hotels. Uh, you have a common chase, multiple floors, dryer exhaust from each unit, uh, pushing that air into a negatively uh, pressurized chase. So one fan up on the top of the chase and then you have your high, uh, you have your low pressure about two thirds of the way down the duct board, down, down the chase uh, to pick up the static, um, the static pressure. And then you, on the high side, you have this to atmosphere on the outside of the chase. As the pressure goes up in uh, this chase, because you have more units coming on, that will send a signal back to the pressure controller to the EC motor to speed up. So that becomes now a direct acting scenario. And then negative pressure is exactly the opposite where you have a, a fan on the negative space trying to maintain negative versus the adjacent space. You have the low pressure, the high pressure hooked up as shown. And as this negative space um, as the pressure is going higher and you want it to be, um, you want it to be lower, obviously, then again, that will, the pressure is going up. So you'll send a signal back to the motor uh, to speed up. Positive pressure, uh, very similar. Maybe you have an air handler or a fan uh, moving that air into this space, um, sending a signal back to the motor, um, again, direct acting control. So this covers a lot of different uh, scenarios that you'll find on, on many jobs that you're working on. And hopefully this low cost pressure controller uh, hooked up to an EC motor, it would be a good, a good, um, good solution for you. Any other questions that you might have on this?
Well, I'll finish by just by showing you that um, uh, just it's easy with the pressure controller, simply that putting in the direct acting as a, uh, a menu driven or, or the reverse acting. It's as simple as that. And then as the probes, um, different types of probes, as in the total pressure probe and the velocity probe, it all depends on your application. Great, right, Chad, back to you. Thanks, Eric. If you have any other questions, you can put them in the chat section of the meeting. Um, also, uh, we can hang around for a couple seconds if you have, you know, a few minutes if you have any other questions, uh, particular applications, so you can always stick on and we can we can answer those. These series are recorded and posted to our YouTube channel. You can find it at Long Building Technologies. Um, subscribe to that under the Coffee Breaks webinar series. And, um, you can access this for future reference or share with your colleagues, or if you have somebody who needs to reference this in the future, uh, please do so. We appreciate your time and joining us today. Eric, thank you for all the information you share. All right, doesn't seem like we have any other questions right now at this moment. So uh, thanks, Eric, for presenting for us. And um, if we have any you know, follow-up questions or anything that come through, um, certainly let you know. But thank you very much for joining us today. Thanks for having me.